Hello, everyone. Bonjour. I'm Jess Rea, and I'm Assistant Professor of Data Science at the University of Virginia, and I'm also a member of the NYCH Council, Le Conseil de Nuit, in Montreal, Vancouver, Vancouver, with a two-year mandate. And thank you so much for having me here today uh, and in this event. And thanks for the Canadian Open Data Summit organizers for putting this really exciting event together. So I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about my research with you. And today I'll be discussing a work in progress that I'm developing in Montreal. It's an action research project about data governance for the 24-hour city. And it aims to understand the place of nightlife policy in relation to different urban governance mechanisms in Montreal, having in mind the consolidation of a smart city's agenda in the city and the current and upcoming challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I usually look at power dynamics between people, technologies, and space, analyzing specific stakeholders to understand ecosystems and a larger social infrastructure. Uh, and here, I try to understand this overlap of nightlife, data, smart nurse, using these approaches and perspectives. So, so for context, it's just like a combination of urban communication, public policy, and law. And uh, I always look at these topics from uh, a social justice and public interest uh, perspective. And it also includes thoughts and practice from the openness community uh, and the collaborative work of digital rights organizations and scholars, especially in Latin America and all these networks of uh, organizations uh, dealing with technology and society issues. And obviously, a night studies, and for those unfamiliar with the concept, night studies is an emerging transdisciplinary field of research that look at the night, broadly understood, from different approaches and backgrounds. So here, I consider the relations between data and the night from two um, perspectives. Measurements of the nighttime economy and the French-Italian tradition of time geographies that addresses the city's needs according to its territories in different times of the day. So that's the idea of like open data for a 24-hour city that uh, we put the night into this open data perspective. And I'll get to this in a minute. And so for, for a little bit of context, over the last seven years, I have studied the smart city agenda and the data governance in cities in Brazil mainly really big metropolis such as Sao Paulo, Rio, and Curitiba, and other cities in Latin America through a variety of applied research projects that combine interdisciplinary chains working on policy, law, and data science. So many issues from the global south are also relevant for, to the global north and Canada specifically and vice versa. So I really believe we have a lot to learn and share between regions. So this industry-led policymaking like the establishment of cities as market is in a narrow view of what smart is sometimes. So normally data-driven initiatives are fully focused on specific frameworks of efficiency, for example, in a really limited uh, perspective of what the 24-hour city should look like and what we understand of night and nightlife when we are talking about these topics. So for years, uh, discussions of the night have happened in isolation from discussions of data in various forms of urban intelligence, even if the needs to measure and plan the night are increasingly relevant to night studies. So the lack of data focusing specifically on the nighttime economy and broader analysis of the impact of a smart city agenda beyond daylight leaves stakeholders navigating challenging circumstances without essential information. And that was really exacerbated by the, the pandemic since last year. And so having all this in mind, I decided to combine my interest in night studies and my experience working with data governance from critical and public interest perspective to design this project that I'll briefly present to you today. So all this work I've been doing in Latin America gave me the tools to identify some regional challenges, transnational trends, and the potential to develop a comparative research agenda. So in Montreal, I've been developing the data governance for the 24-hour city project. And instead of just mapping the issues uh, of like in Montreal, I think I really am in a, what I consider a privileged position for a researcher that I have like the opportunity to be directly involved in policy making and advocacy connected with different agendas and multiple interests in the ecosystem. And as a member of Montreal Vancouver Vancouver's Night Council since 2020, 
I can learn from my peers, share knowledge, and experience the multifaceted reality of advocating for better nightlife policies in the city. And during this project, this like when this uh, the lack of open data for the night and ways to measure the night in the city really came up and caught my attention. So this project was carried out at McGill University since 2019 with funding from the Mellon Foundation and an additional grant from the Bank of Montreal in the form of a fellowship at the Center for Interdisciplinary Research on Montreal, which allowed me to focus on data governance for the urban night. And now I'm carrying out this project at the University of Virginia. Montreal, for those who are unfamiliar with the city, uh, is located in Quebec, Canada, with a population of 4 million in the metropolitan area. And the city is known for its technological system. The gaming industry established decades ago a booming AI hub, which the French newspaper Le Monde called it the new Silicon Valley of AI in 2019. And more recently, the city won the Smart City Challenge from Infrastructure Canada, receiving $50 million as the main prize. And the city is also known for its vibrant nightlife, all the festivals, music, scenes, and entertainment industry. So it's really a privileged object of study for us. And as part of its candidacy for the smartest city in Canada, the city of Montreal presented a proposal to improve mobility and food security through data-driven initiatives. Uh, the proposal encompasses the creation of a network called Montreal and Coma, Montreal and Coma, that will be discussed during the Canadian Open Data Summit, and I, I really recommend you check it out, involving the participation of several partners. In the meantime, the Urban Innovation Lab uh, Laboratoire d'Innovation Urbaine de Montréal um, decided to create a digital data charter presented for public consultation. And with its 13 principles, the document represents like, a really important step toward better data governance and digital rights at the municipal level. Uh, and there is room for improvement for sure. And we were happy to see they were open to having many conversations with uh, us and other stakeholders in the ecosystem to discuss this. And here's like the, and they have this process of public consultation that is crucial in the formulation and implementation of such an impactful document. And even uh, if the process was not ideal, uh, they really were really open to conversations. We wrote, uh, Anna Brandochesco and I wrote our comments and decided to publicize them. And then had like meetings with the folks over there at the, a Leon, and it was like really interesting to have this opportunity to talk. And I've been trying to think about the data charter from the perspective of the nightlife policy being developed in Montreal that I'll talk to you and tell you a little bit more about it in a, in a minute. But I think these processes are very important in a city like Montreal, like holding public, holding public consultations in trying to address this issue collectively and being willing to listen and I, I think we are uh, in a really, it's a good attempt to, to make some changes in the city and I look forward to the results in a few months. And in Montreal, as in many other places, uh, the closing down of night culture was one of the first and most dramatic social effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The city had been behind other major cities when it came to nighttime policy making, coherent tools or strategies for nighttime governance. As we saw, like we had the digital data charter and we had like open data portals and the city has been like thinking about this and creating and implementing different policies that value open, data and data governance at the municipal level. And now we finally have start to have some mechanisms for nighttime governance. So how can we make these two agendas uh, be aligned and talk to each other and improve both sides at once? Here is an example of uh, the nighttime governance ecosystem from the Global Nighttime Recovery Plan, uh, chapter five that was released in March this year, earlier this year. And one of the main governance mechanisms that we know is like night mayors, um, but uh, can also be called night ambassador commissioners, have like many different names and titles for this role and how they articulate several stakeholders in the nightlife. And so, you know, it's not something quite recent. Uh, it's been around for almost two decades, the idea and the concept of a night mayor that started in Amsterdam and many other cities had adopted something similar. And here we have like an idea more or less 
um, this is from the same report. And we have like over 50 cities that actually have a mechanism of nighttime economy governance similar to night mayors or office or departments. And in Canada, we have Toronto and Montreal since last year and Toronto 2019. Uh, it's quite focused on the global north, but that does not mean that the global south does not have this kind of mechanism. Sometimes it's less um, established or organized like in a formal way, but we do have, and people are really thinking about these issues in the global south as well, just like have this in mind. And this is the report that we, launched uh, and then on the one hand the COVID-19 pandemic shut down nightlife and on the other hand it exacerbated the need for open reliable and big data to understand and operationalize the city at night this is a discussion that I, I see it's like one of our main debates right now about nighttime economy governance nightlife governance is like the lack of data to understand even the impacts of the pandemic or things that we didn't have before and are just exacerbated and even more complicated. So the need for open data that really helps us to understand and address nightlife. And in March, we launched this report for the Global Nighttime Recovery Plan. It's an international platform in which the, we discussed the need for better data governance for the night. And a comprehensive report on data will probably be published later this year. And we had the chance to write about Montreal and write a little bit about the, the lack of open data policies for the, as their Helen said, the relaunch of the economy at the city level in Montreal. And here's uh, an ecosystem that is still a little bit preliminary that I've been trying to uh, write down. So when we talk about nightlife, it could be super broad and super abstract. So when you talk about nightlife, what are we exactly talking about? And this is a, an attempt to map all the stakeholders and the institutions, the organizations involved in nightlife. So we have everything from food and entertainment to like work, both formal and informal, um, model regulation, infrastructure, transit and mobility, uh, public spaces, sustainability, the media. So we have like so many stakeholders and so many people and institutions inhabiting the night and from hospitals to restaurants, to delivery services, to public transit. So it's important to think about nightlife as this really complex ecosystem. And then you can imagine how open data policies are crucial for the proper uh, work and uh, functionality of nightlife in the city as a whole. So this is the kind of view that I would like us to have about nightlife. And uh, this, uh, we have like several state and non-state actors, a diverse range of regulations and pol a policy framework that is quite difficult to understand, specifically in Montreal. Uh, so we have like culture, entertainment, infrastructure, and one way or another, most of these actors need data and information to provide services to their communities and achieve their goals. And that's why I think like we really need better open data policies for the night in many cities around the world. And this is Montreal case. And as I said, like the Montreal Vancouver Vancouver has been around for a few years. And in 2020, they decided to create the first night council. Uh, and we finally decided to uh, move forward with some nightlife policies in the spring and summer of last year. So we saw significant developments uh, in Mohai Vankatun Katri, which is like a nonprofit organization advocating for the interests of various cultural players in Montreal Night Culture. Launch, launched in June 2020, the city's first Conseil Denui Night Council, a multi stakeholder body bringing together representatives of various organizations and sectors involved in the city nightlife. Um, and so we did lots of reports, public consultations, and we've been thinking about data governance too. And uh, same year, surprisingly, last year during the pandemic, the city government began to elaborate a new comprehensive nightlife policy in, the, in trying to address some of the historical uh, issues in the city. So the first initiatives for nighttime governance structures were announced, and while these were not designed as a response to the pandemic itself, they included economic recovery plans for mitigating the impacts of the ongoing pandemic. And also in June 2020, the city's economic development department appointed its first commissioner of noise and night, Commissaire Bruy Inui, Deborah Delaunay. Uh, and with this appointment, Montreal had given itself the equivalent of nightmares now found 
in over 50 cities worldwide. And uh, as uh, Derone already mentioned uh, before in some of her presentations and through all the process of the nightlife policy, the lack of consistent data to understand, plan, and relaunch the nighttime economy in Montreal was an important issue. And uh, she tried to put together and share with us a data inventory with everything she could collect from other municipal departments and services related to the urbanite. And it was a one page PDF document. Um, we could not have access to many other uh, data, data sets, data inventories or databases. So it's been kind of like a, it's an ongoing conversation with, for example, the STM, Moher Van Katri Van Katri held a meeting with STM people to try to understand better the night options, the, let's say night public transit options for the city and open data. And uh, we have not advanced that much in that yet. So I really hope we can have access to more open data about night life soon. Uh, and in the meantime, several organizations that we work with have been complaining about the lack of data to understand the impacts of the pandemic and how we can rebuild nightlife together. And that's how my field work came together. And here, like, for example, the first diagnostic, like the portrait sort of uh, La Vie Nocturne that we wrote, like trying to, to map how we were at night with nightlife last year uh, and we mapped the state of art of nightlife governance and highlight like a few policy recommendations and here the need for better open data policies was already uh, featured here when like the night comes to you from last year and we've been doing lots of our activities online and it's weird to have a night council during the pandemic and we were under curfew in Quebec for five months so it's been a, an interesting time to be working with all these issues uh, and it's uh, quite, yeah, quite exciting on the one hand, but so, so weird on the other hand too. Uh, here, this is from the municipality, the, the city of Montreal, when they were launching the new nightlife policy and trying to have this pluridisciplinary approach to nightlife and uh, from the economic side, the cultural side, health, security and diversity, and also uh, nocturnal mobility. And it was unexpected to have this development. This is to an ongoing process. Uh, we're a little, I think, behind on the schedule here for the, the police, but so, and it's an election year in the city. So things are a little bit, um, complicated and we hope really hope to have like the final or at least the final draft for the new policy soon and this was like a mood stakeholder collaborative process quite interesting and then the topic of the lack of data uh, and open data consistent and like available to different communities has been an issue throughout the entire process. And then when we had the consultation and the public consultations with the citizens, late 2020, this topic emerged again and again during the summit. So it's something that has been ongoing in, during this entire process in the city. And so, uh, and here's like an example of the things that I'm doing. So I've been like trying to map the regulatory and policy frameworks, map what kind of uh, data sets and, that we have in Canada and in uh, Montreal specifically about nightlife that could be used and what it's lacking, like what the gaps in this process and in, in like the main three aspects of this data governance for the night in Montreal. It's to understand like where and how the lack of consistent data affects the work of these actors, how irresponsible data practices would harm their communities. And we are talking about nightlife and we there is a potential of harm that it's quite remarkable here. Not everyone needs to be visible or invisible. And also like the perceptions of data governance policies in Montreal and looking for like this kind of partnerships with open data and just brief like we were asking like okay what kind of open data we can find that's available right now and has to do somehow with nightlife and then uh we could find a few things at the federal level as you can see like about sleep and health um and also other things about like the metropolitan areas in the country and in Montreal specifically, we have lots of things in terms of like noise and security, 
uh, mobility as well, but it's still not enough for many people, especially the cultural part. It's, re it's interesting and it, I'm happy this is available, but we need to like uh, foster more and find more ways to open data in a way that will not, it's responsible and actually not, will not harm many of the communities inhabiting the night. And so the next step we have is this survey. And I mapped more than 200 stakeholders and trying to divide them into these categories. So we have people from the government, so civil society and advocacy, industry and academia. And uh, the idea is to be like asking them what kind of data would be useful for them, what kind of data they would like to have open, what kind of data sets and inventories, and respecting all the ethical concerns in digital rights, who should be visible or invisible, uh, and how this should be addressed by, for example, the social data hub and the smart city agenda in the city, the new, uh, how is this aligned to the data charter in Montreal? And so, and this is like the part we are developing right now. Uh, the survey will try to map these needs, the interests, the things that should or should not be available. And that's uh, also a call for the open data community if you're interested in these topics and would like to contribute. To, that would be amazing. Would love to hear your opinion, uh, inputs, collaboration, uh, concerns, criticism. We are like very open to this. And later we are uh, willing to expand this project and do some comparative research in North America, US, Canada, and Mexico about nightlife governance, open data, and this kind of regulatory frameworks in North America. So if you're interested in this, we would love to hear your opinion and your inputs. Um, it's very important. Uh, so I will leave my contact over here. And if you want to like keep this conversation going, I would be happy to hear it. And I really appreciate your attention today. Thank you very much.